Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to take a look at the lens blur filter in Photoshop. What I want to create is an image or a sequence of images that I can then turn into a video that has the appearance that it was photographed with a tilt shift lens on my camera. So this is the image that we're going to be working with. This is how we're going to actually create the blur. We're going to use this image. And then we're going to use an action in the batch command in order to apply the same blur to the whole series of images. Now, there are a variety of different ways you can do this. And the way that I'm going to show you isn't by far the easiest way, but it is the way that will give you the most control over the blurred area of your image. So for example, an easier way might be just to move over here into the develop module in Lightroom or use the camera raw dialog box and use either one of the selective adjustments, either the graduated filter or the adjustment brush. You could change your sharpness all the way down to negative 100. And then you can just click and drag. And you can see now that part of my image is blurred and part of it is in focus. And in fact, we can add multiple blurs. So I can click the new button right there. And we can even make them overlap so that I can get twice as much blur in an area. If I wanted to be a little bit more precise, I could move over to my adjustment brush and actually paint in the areas that I want to be blurred. But I'm actually going to undo those last two adjustments and return back over to the grid view. For more control, I'm going to take this image into Photoshop. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control E, in order to edit this image in Photoshop. Now, I said edit original because I hadn't made any adjustments in Lightroom, so it comes over just fine. Now, the lens blur filter, which is the filter that I ultimately want to use on this image, needs to work with what's called a depth map, which is really like it's an alpha channel or a mask. And in order to create that, there's kind of a sneaky way that we can use a different filter and have a more flexible way of creating that mask and then just duplicate that mask and use it with a lens blur filter. So that's what we're going to do. But before I do that, I want to make a duplicate of the background layer. So first of all, I will just double click on the background and that will convert the background into a layer. And then I'll use Command or Control J in order to make a duplicate. And I'm going to double click on the name of that layer. And we're going to call this um, GB for Gaussian Blur. This is my Gaussian Blur layer. And we can just turn off layer 0 for now. Now, before I add the Gaussian Blur, I'm going to convert this into a smart object. So I just used my right mouse click there and converted that into a smart object. Now, watch what happens. When I go into the Filter menu and I come down to my blurs, you'll notice that because I'm working with a smart object, the field blurs as well as the lens blur filter are grayed out. So I can't actually use those filters with a smart object. Otherwise, I would go directly to, to that filter and not the Gaussian blur filter. And by the way, I have another video on the whole uh, new filter gallery, the field blur and the iris blur and the tilt shift blur in Photoshop. And you're more than welcome to watch that and use one of those blurs. I just think that the lens blur filter actually is going to give us the most control and the most realistic looking blur. So in order to make this depth map, I'm going to choose the Gaussian blur filter for now. And we can just add maybe like an eight and a half or so pixel blur. I just want to make sure that we can really see the blur that's going on here. And I'll click OK. Now, because I'm working with a smart object, I get a smart filter. And that smart filter comes with a mask automatically. So if we click on the mask for the smart filter, now I can use any of my painting tools, the gradient tools, anything I want in Photoshop in order to make this complex and precise mask. And for today's demo, we're not going to make it that complex. But I'm just going to tap the G key to show you. For example, if you use this fourth gradient right here, we can click and drag out from the center. And what we get is a gradient that goes in both directions. So we kind of fade from blur, from seeing the Gaussian blur, because the mask is white in this area. And then it goes to black, and then it fades back to white. And in fact, if I hold down the Option or the Alt key, we can actually see that mask there. So that would be one way to create a mask quickly. And I could then go on from there with my painting tools. Let's actually undo that. So I'll use Command or Control Z. And I will use the paintbrush by tapping on the B key. And now, because I'm painting with black, anywhere that I paint in my image, you can see that I'm going to hide the Gaussian blur here. 
So I'll just paint there and then come down here. But I think, you know, while I'm doing this, I think you can imagine that you could actually get really specific with the areas that you want to either hide or show the blur. And of course, if we paint too much, we can just tap the X key and then paint out the um, blur or hide the blur in the areas that we don't want to see it. And again, if I hold down the option of the Alt key, we can actually look at the mask, and that way I can see areas that I might have missed. So I'll tap the X key again just to make sure that I've got the middle of the building and that little area painted in. And I might want to just add a little bit more here because you see this crane here, it's going to be swinging around during the day, and I want to make sure that the crane stays in focus. Okay. So that is what this would look like if we use the Gaussian Blur Filter. But I want to use this mask as my depth map for the Lens Blur Filter. So we can see here in my Channels panel, and if your Channels panel isn't showing, you can go into the Window menu and then just show Channels. But we can see when I have the Gaussian Blur layer selected, we can see that mask. But if I click on layer 0, that mask disappears. So what I need to do is I need to click back on the Gaussian Blur layer and then just duplicate the mask by just dragging the mask down to the new layer icon. So now when I go back to layer 1, you can see that I still have access to that mask because what I really did is I turned that mask into an alpha channel. So let's hide the Gaussian Blur layer for a minute, turn on layer 0, and then choose Filter, Blur, and then come down to Lens Blur. You can see over here on the right-hand side under Depth Map, it went ahead and selected that alpha channel for me. And we can see in the image area that the area here is not being blurred, but of course all of the outer area is. Now there's some additional options that you can choose. So for example, I can increase or decrease the radius, the blade curvature or the rotation, even the shape here I can pick between a, you know, a triangle, a square, or a pentagon. I can also add back in specular highlights, but I don't want to go too far here just because I know that during the day the sun peeks out in the clouds some of the times and it gets a really bright spot in my sequence. I can also add back in some noise, which is nice. I just added some monochromatic noise because otherwise, like if you use the Gaussian Blur Filter, it just makes the whole area that you've blurred really smooth, and you can really tell the area that has been blurred, it looks really fake. So you just might want to add in a little bit of noise here, make it monochromatic, and then we'll click OK. And let's just zoom in to 100% here because I want to make sure that you see the difference. This is the lens blur effect, and compare that to the Gaussian blur effect. Do you see how different that is? That's the lens blur. We're actually getting this great realistic blur being applied. The Gaussian blur, because it's just using the mask as opacity, it gets kind of this hazy look to it, which is great in other, for other reasons, but I don't want it in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw away that layer that we use to make the mask, right, or the alpha channel. Now, I need to save this out as its own file, so that's why I clicked on it in the Channels panel. I'll do a quick Select All, Command A, Command C to copy it, or Control C to copy it, Command or Control N to make a new file. Because I've just copied that to the clipboard, Photoshop knows the width and height that I want to make it, and then I'll do Command V to paste that. Now, it's pasted as a layer. I don't need it as a layer, so I could use Command or Control E in order to just merge that down. Actually, I don't even need to do that because I'm going to save this as a JPEG. So I can use the keyboard shortcut Command Shift S in order to save this file, and I'll call it Depth Map. And we'll just save this as a JPEG. And doing the save as a JPEG will flatten the image if you hadn't done that. So we'll click Save, use a quality of 12, click OK, and then close this. Now we're back to this original layer, and I can click on the layer in order to make that visible. I don't need it selected, so I'll use Command or Control D to deselect. And then I'll just use my history here to go back in time to when I first opened the image. Because now what I need to do, now that I've got that depth map created, is I need to make a quick action so that we can batch process all of the files using that same depth map and using the lens blur filter. And that's really easy. So I'll grab my Actions panel, and I'll just pull it out here so we can all see it. And I'm going to create a new folder or a new set of actions, and I'll just call this uh, TCP for the complete picture. 
And then we'll start recording our action. And I'm going to call this action depth map. All right, and click record. So I'm going to use the batch command in order to open the file. So I don't need to record the opening of each one of the individual files. But what I do need to record is the opening of the depth map. So that's the first thing I'll do is Command or Control O to open my depth map. Click Open. I'm going to then select all and copy this depth map. Then I'll close the file. And then I need to paste that depth map into an alpha channel into this file. So on my channels panel, I'll click on the new channel icon that creates alpha 1. And I'll use Command V or Control V to paste. So now I will have the depth map being pasted into each individual channel. Excellent. We'll go back up to the RGB channel by clicking on it in the layers panel. And now all I need to do is go to filter come down here to Blur, and then go to Lens Blur. We can use those same settings that we just entered in a minute ago. Click OK. Now I need to do a Save As. We'll go ahead and save this for now. We can save it anywhere. So I'll just save it to the desktop. And I'm just going to call it Test, because right now all I'm really concerned about is recording the action. And then I'll batch process it and rename those files if needed. So we'll just call it Test. So for format, let's go ahead and just save this as a JPEG file. And click Save. I'll use 12 for the quality. And then close the original file without saving the changes. OK, now we can stop recording the action. So you can see here, what I've done is I will use the batch command to open the first image of my sequence. Then I'll open the depth map, select all, copy the depth map to the clipboard, close the depth map file, make a new channel, paste the depth map into the channel, make sure that I've got the RGB channel selected, apply the lens blur filter, save as a JPEG to whatever location I want, and then close the file without saving. Now all I need to do is choose File, Automate, Batch. You can see because I had this action selected in my Actions panel, it's already selected the set and the action. I need to choose the folder of images that I want to run the action on. So we can see here's the Amsterdam 720 pixels. That's the sequence of images that I want to apply it to. I'll click Choose. I don't want to choose any of these other options, so we'll scoot down to Destination. I want to save these to a folder, so let's choose a specific folder. In this case, we'll go to the desktop. And then I'll choose to create a new folder called Processed, and then DM for Depth Map. Or you could call this Tilt Shift or Selective Blur, whatever you want, and click Create. I'll click the Choose button. And then I need to make sure that I'm going to override the Action Save As commands. When you record a save in an action, you're recording two things. You record not only the save as a specific file format, in our case the JPEG, you also record a destination. So in our case, we save them to the desktop. I want to override that save as to the desktop, and I want it to save in this folder instead, but I still want it to save as a JPEG. So checking this box will allow us to do that. Then I've changed the document name here. I just added an LB for Lens Blur and then added the extension. Now all I need to do is click OK, and Photoshop will go ahead and process all 100 or so files that we need to have that blur applied to. OK, now that we have batch processed all of those images, all I need to do is Command O or Control O in order to open. I want to open the first image here and choose Image Sequence and then click Open. Because what Photoshop will do is it will turn that image sequence into a video layer. So I'll click OK. Now we've got our video layer. We can see it right down here in our timeline. If I tap the space bar, well, let's hide the Actions panel first, and then tap the space bar, we can watch the video play. And you can see we've got that nice selective blur effect applied to our image there. And it looks like the image was photographed with a tilt-shift lens. When we're satisfied with the result, we can just choose File, and then Export and render out this video. And you can see in Photoshop CS6, we have a variety of different presets that you can choose from. So if you're going out to YouTube or Vimeo, you can just select from those presets right here. 
And that's how you would create a selective blur or the tilt shift effect with the most amount of control in Photoshop CS6. My name is Julianne Koss. Thanks for joining me.